everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Effort Show with Alex and Joe. And uh, man, first of all, before we literally address anything that we have planned today, we have to say thank you from the bottom of our tiny little hearts for uh, all the love that you showed to our last video, uh, all the people who have viewed it, all the likes, all the awesome comments. And then, yeah. amazingly, uh, we hit the 500 subscriber milestone, uh, which is amazing. Ooh. Now, as you you guys know, like Joe and I don't care about numbers. Like, we really don't. Um, but it is awesome to kind of see that our little tiny channel has gained some traction, maybe. And uh, yeah. uh, to see that kind of love. Um, <laughs> Big time. I, I, I will say we did have this huge, like, 500 subscriber special planned um, where Joe was going to eat so much pudding on camera. Like he was yeah. going to eat like, like more pudding than a human being should like ever yeah. consume. Like, we were aiming for Guinness kind <laughs> of, you know, quantities. Exactly. Right. Like I wanted to see a human being explode from pudding. Um, but, uh, but we didn't have to do that because we, uh, we hit the 500 mark. Maybe if we, if we get close to a thousand, Maybe then, right? <laughs> we will play. Maybe if we're close to a thousand, the oh, thousand another boy subscriber oh, putting episode in the Wayfair. <laughs> yeah, just a tiny whiff of thin mint. Um, we'll see if Joe can consume so much pudding that that he will pop. Uh, yeah, just just the vanilla pudding. Don't sneak any of that BS banana flavored pudding in there. <laughs> yeah, right. Like artificial banana. Artific yeah, like uh, more. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, but we'll anyway, go with chocolate, vanilla, <laughs> some pistachio, maybe I'll do that. It, Not too much butterscotch. That stuff is really rich. A little too sweet. <laughs> you guys can tell how much Joe loves pudding. Like he's still talking about it. <laughs> it you could put it in a pie, and pies are amazing. <laughs> hey, seriously, all seriousness, like yeah. we have talked to you, like we really do not care about the numbers for us yeah. in terms of like doing this on YouTube. We have some deeply held personal motivations for doing this, but the reality mm -hmm. is. We're just having fun. We're having fun creating. Yeah. We're having fun talking and interacting with people and maybe some folks that we would not have uh, otherwise interacted with. We're having fun showcasing yeah. some cool folks in the RPG community. Yep, and uh, Some cool games and having some cool chats. And, yeah, exactly. Man. But in a, all that aside, like, it's still very heartwarming, folks. Mm -hmm. Like, watching that crossover, it was like, dang. Yeah. And their old hearts grew two times that day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two sizes. So, you know, we know your time is valuable, but, you know, saying a million times, but thank you so much for spending yes. it with us. We're super grateful. Um, all right. So for today, Joe, um, and I know, yes. I, like, I, if you guys don't know behind the scenes, I always spring these topics on Joe. Like, he's, <laughs> he's always scrambling at the last, like, you want to talk about what? Like, yes. <laughs> so for today, I want to talk <laughs> about... <laughs> Building a beloved character. And and, and just, you know, so folks kind of know, like Joe and I have done this sort of series uh, in terms of ICRPG, like how to build a character. We've really kind of focused on a lot of the mechanics and some mm -hmm. cool synergies yeah. uh, from all across the ICRPG realm. But we really haven't talked about... The character yeah, of the character. The character of the... Thank you, Joe. The <laughs> character of the character. Like, what makes this character a beloved character and you know what i'm talking about like you know those characters at your table can't stop talking about that you keep coming yeah. back to that you keep telling tales about even long after campaigns have ended like yeah th these ones and you that, all know those characters you've all sat at tables with those characters you've probably even been those characters exactly and you're still talking about the adventures exactly and and sometimes it seems like hey you know why does this certain characters sort of stand out you know what is yeah. the x factor that right. that kind of makes this one of the, the the best characters you know we've we've had a chance to play with right and so today our top five no <laughs> i can't even I, I can't even break it can't even break that down like <laughs> we're we're gonna talk about several ways yeah. uh, several things that we think uh in our experience um mm -hmm. that that could help you have a more more fulfilling, a more rich, yeah. and a more beloved uh, character at the table. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yep. Just like, uh, just like back in Nepal, eh, Talbot? <laughs> That's Speaking right, of beloved Sergeant. characters. 
Yeah. Speaking of beloved characters. Yeah, it, sadly, like Joe and I will probably do a million references that you guys <laughs> won't understand. So you'll just have to, you know, just fast forward yeah. through that part. You've got the 10, 10 second skip. Right. You can reference, <laughs> well, while we reference some of our games, you guys can like be filling in that gap, referencing your own awesome moments. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, we we'll do like a little, you know, make a game of it. <laughs> exactly. But Joe, you played. You know, I would think in terms of like ICRPG lore and some of our games, you know, some of the <laughs> most beloved uh, characters that I have certainly ever seen. I know the the our, the fan base, like the ICRPG community reaction to Hinar is probably yeah. <laughs> like one of the, the like people love Hinar. It's one of the best reactions it, I've ever seen to a character. It blew my mind. Like, man, I, I still get like, you know, almost overwhelmed by it. Like. Because uh, that was back uh, Roll for Effort, you know. So we were playing. These were all games that were, you know, online. Um, still available, I believe. I think, yeah. There's out uh, there somewhere. Yeah, and I, I don't know how it happened. Like, you know, we just sat down to play. And, and mind you, this was this was the first game I had uh, played with Alex. This was way back at the beginning. Ooh. We were out in 1E, which I don't know if I could point. It's one of these white books back over here. Mm -hmm. uh, first edition ICRPG. Um, that's a rarity back there. Uh, but anyway... Um, we were playing that and that was our first game together. That was back in the Google plus days, got the invite. We came in and I was nervous as hell. And when it came time to introduce myself, you know, it was, he's a hill folk, you know, and uh, his name is Hinar. And then I went into the whole thing about his voice and it just did. And that was it. He was just this eight foot gentle giant, old hill folk. Um, there's reference, I think in master edition, but none of the, none of the stuff for him, but yeah, he was, he was a priest of uh, Udin. And uh, I totally ripped off Antonio Banderas's 13th Warrior accent. Mm -hmm. And that was Hinar. Yeah, that was it. And, yeah. and the rest, I have no idea. <laughs> well, that's why. We, we just <laughs> played and people loved him. <laughs> hey, well, that's why we had this video, right? Because mm -hmm. we want to break down what we think are the, are the key pieces that will help you have characters that people really seem to resonate with and will tell right. tales about long after. And we'll have that reaction to people had when Joe would show up in games playing Hinar, they'd be like, Oh my God, it's Hinar. Like, <laughs> that was wild. Yeah. Uh, right. Love you pilgrims. That pilgrim <laughs> game, like, man, y'all had me almost like floored with like the blushing. There was too much blood in the top of my head. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. The love was amazing. But love the pilgrims. You know how we do here on the Ultimate Effort Show? We're going to break it down in practical terms, pieces of yes. advice that you can follow. Yep. And the first one that I want to talk about is I want folks to consider, instead of making the character creation process mm -hmm. one about yourself, yep. making it about ways that you can bolster others and your team. Yes. Okay? So there, that's heavy. But that's the first premise. Yeah. And yeah. I think all too often, right, and we've talked about these great synergies, Joe, I think all too often the first thing people want to focus on is, oh, my God, I want to make this cool <laughs> tank. Right. Or, I, oh, man, I want to maximize my damage output. Mm -hmm. Right. Or I, I want to hit every time. Plus eight on all rolls. You, you yeah. know. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like in that, that is all about sort of making yourself shine. Yeah, yeah, it is. And instead, what I would invite people to do, if you're really looking to make a character that folks love at the table, make that the character that elevates or lifts others up and thrusts those people into the spotlight. Now, the, the cool thing about this is we'll talk about here in a minute when we talk about the entire table, is that if everybody does that, if everybody is elevating everybody else, like, oh my God. Like some of Look those out GM. <laughs> yeah, like some of those sessions are like like whoa, and some of those groups are legendary. Yeah. Right? Big time. Big time. Big time. But yeah, uh, like definitely like like he says, like look at look at lifting the other characters, you know. Like you're sitting here and you know I know Alex is wanting to make a tank. So dang, you know what? I'm playing the priest. I might take this holy bulwark spell so I could give him some, you know, some uh temporary hit points so he can soak more damage because he's going to be out there and it's going to make him even more badass because here's a free extra 10 hit points you know like little just it, it's not a lot yeah you could cast it on anybody but it's more with that thought of bumping up the character that you already know like 
I already know Alex wants to be that tank. I'm just going to help him be a bigger tank. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. And, well, and you know what? Like, you know, you could also be like, hey, you know what? I, I want to make a cool tank, but then be that tank who literally steps in front of everybody. Yes. Like, like if I'm going to spin my surge or my grit, like I'm going to step in front of somebody else and take that damage. Yes. Excuse me. Or take the hit. I'm going to go to altered state and I'm going to take that ability that allows me to intercept attacks. Yes. You know, yes. And, and shield my teammates. Or I'm going to be out front with my yeah. high armor class and my hit points. And yeah. I'm going to be the person who always is there to save somebody else. I'm going to wade yeah. into the danger to drag somebody else or to, to stop whatever I'm doing and do the don't die on me, man. Yep, to get back over there. Exactly. You know, to help somebody I'm gonna, else. I'm going to use my milestone on an ability that actually doesn't do anything for me. I'm going to take Defender, which gives all my close allies my armor class or my defense. Yeah, right? absolutely. Those kind of things. Exactly. Those kinds of things. I mean, I can't tell you, you know, how awesome it is, you know, if I'm if I'm playing sort of maybe the lead fighter in a group, then all of a sudden, like, somebody casts, like, regeneration on me. Or they yeah. cast invulnerability <laughs> on me. Or to Joe's point, they cast Holy Bulwark and suddenly, you know, I have extra hit points, like a blade of hit points. Like, oh my yeah. gosh. And especially if it comes at the last, you know, like at that moment, right at that moment where I'm about to drop. Or I'm about yep. to wade in and do something crazy dangerous. <laughs> you, you know, like it's like, yeah. oh my god. You love exactly. those characters who do that for other characters like you just I'll hold them off get to the door <laughs> yeah you just love them so yeah. so step one at the moment of character creation consider abilities consider uh loot yeah. and milestone choices um or whatever system you're playing right yes. consider those sort of yeah. abilities or powers or spells that are going to help your teammates and aren't necessarily yes. about making yourself be cool. Right? right. Be the tide, not the boat. Ooh, that, that is <laughs> profound. <laughs> that is profound. It was accidental profoundness. <laughs> yeah. Well, that leads us maybe to our second point here. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've made sort of a, a more of a support character uh, so. on your quest to be sort of beloved. And the other piece that I would say that goes hand in hand, hand with that is some sort of self-sacrifice and selflessness yeah. Yeah. at the table. And I have to say, Hinar is probably the shining example of that. Um, <laughs> because I can't tell you how many times Hinar had very few hit points. He had this healing ability where he had to burn his own hit points yeah. to heal somebody else. And even when Hinar only had one or two, he, he <laughs> freely gave them yep, yep. To, to his teammates, uh, even to the point where he would drop. Yep. <laughs> like, that's, yep. that's huge. Uh, you know? I, had, uh, I had the one milestone also that uh, I dropped a zero and a dead ally, so timer death timer already expired, they dead. It would resurrect them back to full and I would drop. Mm -hmm. It was uh, one of my milestones. I actually did get a chance to use that once, and that was that was a crazy time. <laughs> yeah. So any sort of self sacrifice and selflessness um, at the table, um, our games have been replete with many instances of people stepping in front of danger, or yeah. shielding other characters, or dropping whatever they're doing in order to do a "Don't die on me, man." Uh, you know, to do that, you know, stabilization of another character. Um, you know, it, it's one thing like, hey, they, they, they're on a four death timer or whatever. No problem that we got tons of time. Like, no, like run over there right away and take care of right, your fallen him. teammate. Yep. Like that goes that kind of stuff goes a long way. Yeah, really, really does. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would say sort of a corollary with that. Which is something that you know I learned from old hankering. Uh, I've never <laughs> seen it to this degree. Is that sort of sharing is caring? Yes. And it's yes. one thing you know when you get cool loot, right? To kind of divvy it up freely among the group, like, oh, hey, yeah. I think I think this hammer would help you. I think this chest plate would help yeah. you. Yeah. That's that's normal basic stuff. You know. Yeah, but old, every group should be doing. But old hankering really kind of taught us. He would take his best piece of gear. Right, and integral just, to his character build, yeah, kind just, of gear, and just be like, "Here, you need this. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> and like shove it on you. And you're like, whoa, like I can't take, you know, your family's like heirloom <laughs> weapon that's been in your family for generations. And be like, no, this, you need right? this. Right? It will do you better. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Right? Exactly. It would be the honor of my family line. Right. All moments have led to this. Take it. <laughs> exactly. And, and man, <laughs> the moment that happens, you're just like, oh my God, I love this character. Like, right? Like, you know, I you know, I love this character. And I think the other piece that I would say, along with this sort of self-sacrifice and the sharing is caring, is always be on the lookout for those sort of moments. Yeah. Right where you can find those moments where you can, again, elevate somebody else by yes. either giving them, like, literally maybe the best piece of gear you own. Right? right. Or Most certainly. And and I do have to say, if it sounds like a lot of these all kind of, like, loop back to making each other's points, each of these kind of, like, you know, steps or different ways to do it, uh, it's because they all are, they all are kind of an integral web. You'll, you'll, you'll notice a lot of these things do keep coming back into similar areas because they all kind of go hand in hand, whether mm-hmm. you mean them to or not. Like, yeah, they, man, they just things they, like blend. They build on each other. Don't they Joe? Yeah. 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 It's like a, it's like a synergy. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, really and truly, it may be the most powerful synergy yeah, you know, rather, exactly. than, rather than a mechanical one. Right? Yeah, it, was, it was just hit me right now. I was like, man, these all keep coming back to like these same epic kind of deeds. Like, mm-hmm. but it's a beautiful thing. And, and, and trust me, they all are kind of different approaches. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, absolutely. Well, it's just like, you know, it, it goes back to our variety principle mm-hmm. to support others. If you can find yeah. different ways to alley-oop somebody else, man, that's such yeah. a good feeling. Yeah. Right. Like, like we derive, I think, you know, the studies even show like from a human factor standpoint that we derive much more pleasure like mm-hmm. when we gift something to somebody else than it, than we do yeah. when we actually receive a gift, right? So it's the same yeah. same kind of same kind of premise. Like we're if we're constantly gifting the other people around us at the table, and let's be real, it, it you know character side, we're actually taking care of our friends. Yeah, right. If you find ways so. to do that on a consistent basis, <laughs> even as intrinsically going all the way back to your character build, that you're going to take okay. care of your friends. Whoa. You're gonna have a badass game every time. Yeah, and you're gonna have a badass <laughs> character, like yeah, for sure. Uh, Most certainly. Well, and I would say, right, Joe. So you know, right, it's a little bit of a trap. So I think some people think, like you know, it, you know, and maybe this is sort of the min max mentality. Like if I make the best character ever, yep. like I'm gonna be super cool, and in a way, I'm gonna have sort of that power, mm-hmm. right? Right. And truthfully, what I would say is that, I am good at everything. Right. Exactly. And that's going to make me beloved. And I think that's a trap yeah. I, because really it's the other way. Like if you're building that personal power where, where you're <laughs> lifting up other people, you actually ultimately become way more powerful. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The yeah. power to inspire others. <laughs> yeah. Super right? cool. Oh, yeah. All right. And then. This ne- this That's next piece, depth. yeah, right, yeah, I know. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, like, <laughs> eat some I pudding. Need some, I need some <laughs> emotional water wings because that's a deep topic, <laughs> right? Okay, oh, that's beautiful. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna support others. Yes, uh, we're going to create characters that that support others. We're gonna engage yes. in self sacrifice and selflessness and thrust ourselves into danger for our teammates. We're going to give away cool loot to others when they need it yes. and make them better. And then on top of that, what I would meld with that, something you know a little bit about, Joe, is I would create a character and I would think about this holistically in, mm-hmm. in terms of the, that character's voice, uh, your little bits of RP, yep. and then I would suggest some sort of oft-repeated mannerism. Yeah, that, that becomes quirks. kind of sticky. Yeah, some kind of quirk that becomes sticky for your group. You know what I'm talking yeah. about, Joe? Oh yeah, I, I got that. I got an idea or two. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Indiana Jones always losing his hat, but reaching back at the last moment to grab it. That's one of those beloved little quirks. Exactly. Um, Kyo Kazu, Kyo Kazuto, mm-hmm. like uh, Kazuto Kazuko. 
Kazuto. Yeah. Yep. Kazuto. Yeah, my my sword anytime master there Ronin. Was, yep. Anytime there's standing pots or vases, he just has this little habit tapping it, knocking it over with his foot. <laughs> yeah. You know? he, could, he couldn't just resist these it. Little things. These little things. Yeah, like my my old guy Genjiro. His hair was always the mess, and in his face, there was always the hair flipping. And to blow it out of his eyes, you know, just little things that just kind of kept happening. Yeah, and like I don't know, they had, they had a little like uh, these quirks, these moments, like can add levity to a situation. They can like brighten a mood or go for a good laugh, but sometimes they do the opposite and they kind of scale the danger up. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can, and it's just something little that your character kind of frequently does, like uh, the the pots with Kayo, for example. In one situation, toppling over a pot, it's hilarious. Big laugh from the table. In another situation, say you're standing in the tea house of like the big bad, and uh, they're going on their their whole monologue. The bad guy always monologues. They're monologuing, and Kaio's over there and just takes over and and then leans up against the wall and chews on a blade of grass. All of a sudden, that's very threatening, and uh, the situation has escalated. Right. So just these little quirks, and like they can do so much, but that comes back in with that RP, you know, with uh, the role playing these little quirks. Yeah, you know, and it becomes part of that voice. Right. Exactly. And so I think it's a bit broad, right, to say you just have to have good RP, but yeah. but really what I would focus on, you know, I think always the answer is to focus on the micro level for almost anything. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to start to find good answers. Like build some small habit. Like one small habit is think about a mannerism, an off repeated mannerism. Mm-hmm that your character mm-hmm. might have, you know? So my, right. my beloved sort of halfling bell green bag that, that people seem to really like, you know, his thing is he had this sort of like childlike wonder at everything, even to the point where when they were shooting at them, he would exclaim, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, Oh my gosh, they're shooting at us. How wonderful, <laughs> you know, right. like, isn't this exciting? Yeah. You know, and people would be like, I've never been shot at before. It really gets the blood flowing. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that would happen over and over and over again with every new experience. Like he would exclaim mm-hmm. this childlike excitement, <laughs> e- even for really da- like you know I've never been consumed by a ooze before. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, like right. when, when that sort of stuff happens. Yeah. Uh, like that character becomes a very beloved character. Very so beloved. <laughs> think about a small mannerism. That your character or a small quirk that your character might have mm-hmm. off repeat it and if you combine that like joe does with a really cool voice uh whether it's an, <laughs> his antonio banderas voice or whether it's a fun dwarf voice or you know whatever um you know you you, you come up with cockney rhyming slang for all of your sentences like whatever <laughs> whatever you do come up right. with something that's going to make your character a little bit memorable and that mm-hmm. also combined with all the other stuff they're doing to, yeah. to, to help out and elevate others are, is going to make that character a beloved character. Very, very memorable. Very beloved. And and it's, and it's you don't have to, like, you don't have to do a voice. You're not required to, like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm role-playing now. I automatically need to use some kind of accent or, or anything like that. Right. You can just, I mean, nice and simple ways. Um, actually, first, let me back up. The reason I usually do it is to differentiate me talking and character talking, which is, it's a nice, easy divider. Um, and then I guess going back forward, you could do is something as simple as just modulating the tone of your voice. It's still just me, just deeper or higher, and just something little. Like you don't have to be like some master, you know, mimic or anything crazy. Yeah. Like even just you know, my character steps up and says, "You will go no further." <laughs> just a little differentiating, you know, and then uh, and and voice also becomes part of your actions. Like it's not like a requirement. So don't feel pressured on that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just just a little ad for voices. I just enjoy doing them. I've been doing them since I was a kid watching the Muppet show. <laughs> yeah, if you know, maybe you're not, you know, you're not one of those voice uh you're, you're, or you don't feel comfortable doing a voice, you're not one of those mm-hmm. voice people. Yeah. You don't you don't watch the voice like Simon Cowell, to, <laughs> you know like whatever. No problem, right? One of the one of the things that you can do it is like Joe says, you can draw that line between you speaking and your character speaking. And instead of saying, well, hey, I'm going to da 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 da, instead insert your character's name there. So, yeah. so that's a very simple tactic yeah. where you can just, it's very simple practice 
because we're, mm-hmm. we're all about practices and behaviors here that you can all mm-hmm. repeat. A very simple practice is to just say, well, you know what, Kayo, Kayo rifles his finger is along the v- vases and psh, tips over the first one. <laughs> then Kayo <laughs> looks for effect. Psh, and then he tips over the second one. Exactly. By conveying information that way at your table, you mm-hmm. also will create that transition where people are focusing on your character and how beloved that character is. So yeah, that is yeah. a good way to do it if you're not, you know, big into doing voices, right? Yep. Um, Man, I think uh, you, you did mention one thing in there about uh, being comfortable with the table. Yeah. Or if not comfortable with voices. This goes into a different kind of comfort. Being comfortable with the people at your table. That is another grand, grand way to yes. help all of these dominoes tip is, uh, you know, looking into that selflessness is, is trusting the people at your table, being friends with them, uh, developing those relationships, because these are all things that, that are going to further help each of these steps just become all the, all the more better. You know, if, if you're, if you're building a beloved character. Yes. Like, yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and let mm-hmm. me say this about trust too. Because now I'm going to take this, this is a great idea. I'm going to take this to a deeper level. Ooh. So trust at your table is an intangible, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And like a lot of intangibles that you deal with on a daily basis, they are oft ignored. To mm-hmm. me, an intangible like group morale and momentum and trust right? Those are all things that really should be high on your priority list in terms of managing your group and your relationships at the table, right? So how do you build trust at the table, right? How do you keep your eye on the prize in terms of that intangible, right? Um, It's not easy to do. Sometimes it requires a lot of hours. Sometimes it's going to be, I'm going to do something that's going to annoy Joe, and then he's going to turn around and do something that's going to annoy me, but then we're going to have a conversation about it, right? Right. Sometimes it's awkward and sometimes it's messy, (laughs) but it happens Mm -hmm. over time when you spend time with people that you care about. Yeah. And the way you build trust is one, you put in the time. Yep. You have those open candid conversations, even when they're messy and awkward. Yep. (laughs) And you continue to engage in some of these same behaviors that we talked about where it's not about you and it's about yeah. other people and their comfort yes. and their happiness and their fun. And if I help pour myself into these other people, then they in turn are going to have a richer experience. And hopefully I will get that, mm-hmm. that reflected back. Yeah. Joe, Joe, you got any exactly. thoughts? Exactly. You and got any thoughts on that? Um, I, man, that was some, some serious depth, but I, I, I 100% agree. I mean, and that's that's also why, like, you know, Moldy, the Moldy crew and the council, that's why we're such a good tight-knit group is because we're all pouring ourselves to each other. So we're all, like, and it just creates this monumental spiral of, like, awesomeness, I guess a, a vortex of dopeness, uh, where <laughs> we're each lifting each other up and lifting each other up, and it just builds and builds and builds, and tell you those games when you have you know just a good deep trust with everybody and everybody is there lifting each other up making everybody else's characters cooler that is a tough run for a gm i tell you what because the (laughs) synergies that come in when five different characters are all pooling their stuff in and this one thing is going to happen and you're like shit (laughs) actually you know what epic it's not a tough epic it's actually not a tough run for gm it's it's the other way it is that's Lit- true. It is literally easier. <laughs> amazing. Like it's amazing. Right? Strike what I said. Reverse it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. Right. It 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 is honestly like one of the coolest no. things that could happen as a DM. To that's true, man. That the number of, of times you guys have self nerfed because it was just awesome in the fiction, where I'm like, uh, you could have just wrecked my thing, but you decided to break your pinnacle piece of gear. All right, let's do it. Like the self nerfings are beautiful. Yeah. I have to say. Yeah. Well. I mean, Joe, experience. that's so great, too. I mean, that other piece, that sort of those self nerfing moments like, hey, I'm gre- I think that all goes back into it. Though. Yeah, I'm greedy. I feel stuff. like, you know, I feel like right here, like I might, you know, wander off a little bit here. Right. Y- you know, but you know what? That's still uplifting the rest of the group. Yeah. 
absolutely is, man like yeah I, I wish i had like more to add like nope. I, I think you've like stated this beautiful <laughs> thing well and um well i i got one more piece joe i got one more <laughs> I agree <laughs> i got one more and and that is i i think maybe the ultimate thing you could do in terms of having a beloved character is you could control your own ending. Yeah. And yes. truthfully, Osric, one of the things that people do is they look for a heroic epic moment in a game. And you're going to know, you're going to know when the planets align, when the yeah. chips are down, when everything is potentially at its peak. And your character has this moment where potentially on balance, they could change the course of this campaign forever or the course of the game forever. The game world even, depending on your situation. Exactly. I mean, it's the stuff you kind of live for and you kind of hope for. And some of it may mean that you die a tragic hero's death. Yep. It, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I can think of several things, you know, like we... We had this guy, Chief Maritok. He was on the, like, everybody was clinging to an ice cliff. There were these panthers scaling up after them. And it, it wasn't looking good. Like, I don't think the party was going to make it to the top. No. and, and I, Chief, I think we were, pretty, we were pretty boned in the moment. <laughs> yeah, and Chief Maritok made the decision literally to just let go and drop and crash into these ice tigers, and they all go tumbling into the abyss together. Yeah. And and that was like I mean the whole table went whoa like yeah. super epic, right? And it definitely bought us the time because there were still a lot of us scrambling up. You know this this rope bridge had collapsed. We're hanging down this you know edge of this crevasse. Um, I think I was carrying an unconscious woman, so I'm trying to grapple and climb up, and and everybody else is trying to get up, and we were all going to die. It was an intense moment, but yeah. that that not only let all of us survive, but it gave us the time to actually get up off of this precarious position. Um, you know, it, 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 it was amazing. I yeah. can't even recount it properly. Cause it's like, that yeah. was beautiful. Uh, or, you know, his, it was it was in ours ending, right? Like he decided to plant mm -hmm. himself into a tree. Yep. Right. In order to save mm -hmm. the world and stop Durothrax. Yeah finally let the uh because all the way back in those campaigns we got a seed from the tree of life and he swallowed it to keep it safe yeah and it finally took root to seal dirthrax dirthrax away in slumber he he re grew into a tree it sprouted through him mm -hmm. that was wild <laughs> yeah i mean those sorts of moments Ooh. where um where you potentially give up your character's life or you engage in something so heroically dangerous that, that it's almost sure to be the end of you, but the salvation of everybody else. Yeah. Keep, if you keep an eye out for those moments and you rise to the occasion in that moment, it is heroically epic and you will have a beloved character. I promise you like that yes. will be a character people will talk about forever. Yeah. So forever. And, and we've had countless <laughs> ones. I mean, we really yeah. have, you know, right. I, I guess one thing to add, if you're going to make a beloved character, don't aim for making a beloved character. Just play and have fun and just have a good time with your homies. Don't go at it going like, I'm going to make a beloved character. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like, go in and go <laughs> like, don't... Your, your first thought should be, I'm going to make a character that is going to make my friends bad ass. Right. Wait till they see what I'm doing. Yeah. Again, like back to, to make our them cool. Yeah, it can't be selfish. It can't come from a selfish place. Yeah. Like, people are going to see right through that, right? Yep. You'll like, look like a politician. Correct. Like, these should don't, be... Don't be a politician. Right. But these are the behaviors that people engage in. These are the practices that people have naturally, you know, be, yeah. because they want to help their friends that ultimately translate into them having a, a beloved character. Indeed. Because, I mean, even with Cord and Gilsunder... I wasn't in those games, but I know the stories and legends of Cord and of Gilsunder oh, because thanks. the characters were big. The characters got bigger than, you know, bigger than uh, than the game, I guess you could say. Like, yeah. I wasn't for there for those games, but I know their legends. Yeah, so, exactly. Like exactly. And you never can tell when it's going to happen. 
But when it happens, everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. Trust your players, trust your friends. Yeah. Hey. And go have fun. And so all you need is love. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> that's so that's so great. We've man, we've talked all around this. Yeah. Talked all about this. Let, let's do a quick recap yep. of, of the best ways to potentially have a beloved character at your table. So number one, during character creation, even at the very beginning, think in terms of support and yes. elevating your friends and building in synergies to yep. help your friends. Yep. Think externally as opposed to internally. Perfect. It's not what the game can do for you. It's what you can do. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Number two. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Self-sacrifice. Consider self-sacrifice, yes. consider selflessness as a corollary to that. Sharing is caring. Find ways to alley-oop your friends, give them cool mm -hmm. gear, run into danger to protect them. Yes. Do all those sorts of behaviors that help your teammates. Yes. Number, yes. Number three, a good bit of RP goes a long way. If you can do a voice, money, but think about a fun mannerism, like an off-repeated mm -hmm. quirk or mannerism that people yep. will really latch onto, not in an annoying way, but in yep. a way that makes your character a bit a bit more beloved. Yeah, not the flicking their ear every time you walk by kind of way. Yep. Bad quirk. <laughs> Number three, trust your table and yes. find ways to focus on that intangible and build trust mm -hmm. um, yes. at every turn with your friends. And finally, our last one, always be on the lookout for an epic heroic moment like some big moment yes. not for grandstanding sake but for mm -hmm. that moment where you can save the day potentially yes. the ultimate self-sacrifice throwing mm -hmm. yourself into oblivion as a character in order to save the entire party die you fools <laughs> everybody knows it well friends yeah. i have to say that was uh that was a fun chat, Joe. And uh, yeah, hopefully we've good. given some people uh some things to think about. You know, if right. if you find yourself chafing against these things, you know, maybe the thing to do is take a step back and get curious. Mm -hmm. You know, why am I chafing about these things? You know, maybe what can I do uh in terms of my own table uh yeah. to, to have a better experience with my friends, to uplift my friends and to make mm -hmm. them cool. Yeah. That that would just and, be my simple invitation. Yeah, and, and we'd love to hear about some of your great characters. You know, let us let us know down in the uh, the whole combat or combat the comment section. Not a combat, please. Gosh, no. Let's have a combat. <laughs> hey, roll for initiative. No, um, the comment section. Like, let let us know about yep. those, or if you have any questions, uh, you know, or or well, you know, need a well, little bit more info or something. Or hey, if Joe and I miss something, and you're just like, hey, you know what? Like, this would be something yes. that would really make you know, a character, a beloved character, let us know. Like we, we yeah. love seeing those cool comments. So indeed. Yes. <laughs> Everyone. Thank you so much. And Joe. Oh. Yeah. Till next time, folks, take our hero coin and always roll ultimate. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>